in the last lecture we have introduced a quantity which we called as the Shannon entropy uh, which essentially measured the degree of uncertainty which is associated with an event. Why I called it entropy we will see as we go along today. The point to be noticed regarding the quantity which I defined as uh, the entropy is that the uncertainty does not depend upon the values that the random variable takes, but it depends upon the probabilities that is the uncertainty associated with an event and that is why we said that supposing I have an event which has various possibilities of happening and if the ith event has a probability pi, I define the uncertainty function h as equal to minus sum over i pi log of pi and I pointed out that it is traditional to take the base of the logarithm to be 2. So what is this Shannon entropy? This Shannon entropy it gives as we have discussed the lower bounds that is associated with an event. We had seen there are other ways of calculating information particularly in terms of asking questions out of a set of possibilities and we have shown at least illustrated that the bound that is given by Shannon entropy is the least. In other words we have said that you cannot code a, a message uh, with the compression being given by a quantity less than the Shannon entropy. Now the next question is why do we use the word entropy for this? You recall that you have been associated with this uh, word entropy from your knowledge of the second law of thermodynamics and in fact the person who introduced entropy was Boltzmann. But to understand what is the similarity of the entropy that I am talking about which is also occasionally called as the information entropy. I would have to take you a little bit uh, on the concept of entropy as it is understood in statistical physics. Now what Boltzmann did was the following that supposing you have a system where the macroscopic state is decided by now when I talk about a macroscopic state it means the states which have uh, characteristics which are decided by uh, the gross picture of this ensemble but corresponding to every macroscopic state I may have several microscopic states and what Boltzmann did is to show that the entropy that we talk about in this case is given by k log w where w is the number of configuration corresponding to a macroscopic state and kb is the usual Boltzmann constant. Now just to be specific let us consider n number of particles in a given volume and let us suppose that I distribute this volume into several cells. This is the volume that you have and this volume I distribute to several identical cells. So I could do this for example. So supposing I have L number of identical cells and I have N number of particles to be located inside. Now when I am talking about a microscopic state or a micro state. I need to supposing I number the particles from 1 to n, then I need to tell you where does particle number 1 go, where does particle number 2 go. So it could be for example particle number 1 goes here, particle number 2 goes there, particle number 3 goes there, particle number 4 goes here again like this. So by giving details of where a particle is, I would specify a micro state of the system. Now what is a macro state? Now while define a macro state, 
I do not care about the individual identities of the particle, but I will say there are two particles in this state, there might be four particles in this state, etcetera, etcetera. Now, these two particles here, for example, in this particular cell, that it is particle number 1 and 4, or whether it is particle number 7 and 20, it does not make any difference for description of a macro state. So, let us talk about the following. Let us say W is the number of micro states associated with a given macro state. So, what does it mean? Uh, supposing I have told you already that we have L number of cells. So, a mac macro state is specified by saying there are n1 number of particles in cell number 1, n2 number particles in cell 2. Likewise, n L number of particles in cell number L. So, since I do not care about which particles are where. So, the number of configurations that I have is essentially obtained from the elementary theory of permutation and combination which is given by factorial n where capital N is the number of particles that I have divided by n 1 factorial n 2 factorial up to n l factorial. Now, clearly sum over i n i is equal to m. Now, what I do is this, I take logarithm of both sides. Now, when I take the logarithm of both sides, I use a formula for large numbers. I assume all these numbers that I have are large because I am talking about a statistical ensemble in a molecular assembly. So, this Stirling approximation tells me that if you have a large number log of and you take the logarithm of the factorial, then you can approximate this as m log n minus n. So, let us look at what does it give me regarding w. So, which was factorial n by n 1 factorial n 2 factorial up to n l factorial. So, I get log w is equal to log of factorial n. So, this term is n log n minus n minus log of all these things and so therefore, minus sum over i n i log n i minus n. You can see that this minus n and the plus n here which comes because of the fact that sum over i n i is equal to n, they cancel out and I am left with n log m minus sum over i n i log n i. Now, I would like to write it in a slightly different way by realizing that what is the probability of finding a particle, particular particle in uh, the cell i. So, since I said the number of particles in the cell i is n i, the probability p i of finding a particular particle in the cell i is given by n i divided by n. So, I will rewrite this log w which we had just now seen is given by n log n minus sum over i n i log n i in the following way. Let us keep this as n log n 
minus sum over i. This n i as you realize is nothing but n times p i logarithm of n times p i. Open up the uh, terms there. So, I have n log n minus sum over i n p i log of n plus log of p i. So, you notice here log of n does not depend upon i and capital N also comes out of it. So, the first term is minus n log n if I take it out sum over i p i, but then that must be equal to 1 because it is just the sum of probability minus n sum over i p i log p i. So, this quantity since sum over i p i is equal to 1, I can write it as minus n sum over i p i log p i. So, therefore, the average entropy is just obtained by dividing this quantity by n and so average entropy is written as which is simply obtained by dividing this by n so which is equal to minus sum over i p i log p i. Now to understand the name entropy look at the following situation. Let us consider two specific distributions. In the first case let me put all the particles in a single cell. For specific calculation let us assume L b of the order of 10 to the power 6 or so. That is I have divided the volume into 10 to the power 6 identical cell. So, when I say all the particles is in a or are in a given cell what I mean is p i is equal to 1 for a given i. and is equal to 0 for all i. for all others. Now, if that happens then my entropy because whether it is 0 log 0 which as you know limit of x log x goes to 0. So, this would be given by 0. because log of 1 is also there. Now, let me now talk about a slightly different situation. Let us suppose instead of all the particles being in one cell, let me say that they are in two different cells equally distributed in two different cells. Now, if they are distributed in two different cells out of a possible 10 to the power 6 number of cells, the number of configurations for equal populations in two cells. Now, that is clearly given by 10 to the power 6 C 2 which is 10 to the power 6 factorial divided by factorial 2 into 10 to the power 6 minus 2 factorial. So, you just multiply these things and you find this is nothing but 10 to the power 6 into 10 to the power 6 minus 1 divided by 2. Now, which is approximately equal to 5 into 10 to the power 11. This is comes only from this term 10 to the power 6 into 10 to the power 6 which is 10 to the power 12 divided by 2. The other term is much smaller compared to 10 to the power 12. So, look at this situation. 
Now, in this case, the probability of the particle being in either cells is half. So, therefore, the average entropy is just log 2. Now, so if I started with all particles in a single cell where my entropy was 0, suppose I migrate to 2 cells, then the probability with which they migrate because of this is given by 5 into 10 to the power 11 divided by the number of configurations in single cell plus 5 into 10 to the power 11 again because that is the number there which is approximately 1 minus 10 to the power minus 5. Now, look at this. The if I had just 2 automata since I had 10 to the power 6 cells in the first case. So, I had essentially the probability to be 10 to the power minus 6 because I am saying all the particles must go to one particular cell out of the 10 to the power 6. When I relax that condition and said let half of them go to one cell and the other half go to another cell, I found that the relative probability is very close to 1. So, in other words, the systems tend to equilibrate to a state of maximum entropy. So, therefore, the statistical entropy is a measure of disorder in the system. More the disorder, more is the entropy. Now, let us come back to Shannon entropy. The Shannon entropy is a measure of uncertainty associated with events which occur with different probability. More the uncertainty is, higher is the Shannon entropy. So, you see the one to one correspondence both in terms of physical interpretation and in terms of the expression that we had obtained in statistical physics and for the information theory. It was Boltzmann who had actually connected the thermodynamic entropy which was connected with the heat Q and the temperature by suggesting that the constant which comes in front of the log W should be identified with a constant which later on was given the name of Boltzmann constant. So, therefore, the uh, entropy in statistical physics becomes k log. In this case, I, I do not need to contribute to uh, the statistics or statistical physics or thermodynamics. So, therefore, we take the definition of Fanon entropy to be minus sum over i p i log p i which is what I indicated by this function h. With this, let me look at what is a typical communication system. This is schematic diagram of the communication system is shown in the slide. So, what happens in a communication system is I have a source which generates the message that I am trying to communicate, but I have to encode it in terms of binary digits. So, which I do and then over a channel which could be any type of channel, you can say old style telegraph there was one type of channel, now they have fiber optic channel or whatever is your channel, microwave channel. It would go and receive in, the, in a receiver. But then receiver will receive it in a coded form. So, he will now have to apply a decoder to get back the original message. But on the way what happens is the system picks up, the channel picks up external noise. And this is what we discussed while talking even about the quantum communication 
and so therefore the surrounding they superpose the noise being that is being sent with random disturbances and so therefore the job of a communication system is to somehow or other eliminate or minimize such noise. We define the information capacity of a communication system as the rate of information usually measured in kilobits per second that can be carried over the channel with least amount of noise. I assume for the uh, purpose of this discussion that I am talking about the raw information capacity. In practice, the real information capacity is lower than the raw information capacity because of the presence of noise. Now, what type of a code do I have? So, let us look at a code in which I take these letters. You might uh, identify these letters. I said A is equal to 0, 0, C is equal to 0, 1, G is equal to 1, 0, and T is equal to 1, 1. What am I trying to do here? I am trying to send a DNA sequence. I am trying to send a DNA sequence by trying to indicate what is the sequence in which A, C, G, T occur. And since I have to send it in a binary form, I use this code A is equal to 0, 0, C is equal to 0, 1, G equal to 1, 0, T is equal to 1, 1. Now, let us suppose that the letter A appears with 40 percent probability, letter C 30 percent and each of G and T occurs with 15 percent. Now, since each one of these letters is coded by 2 bits, my average letter or each letter has an average length of 2 bits. So, there are 2 bits per letter on an average. Let us consider an alternative model in which what I do is this. I take the same probabilities of occurrence but I code A by 0 single bit, C by 1 0, G by 1 1 0 and T by 1 1 1 0. Now notice I have just taken a ab abrupt scheme which I have cooked up. This if you recall was 40 percent, this is 30 percent. 15 percent and 15 percent. So, if I am to calculate the average number of bits per letter, I have 0 0.4 into 1 because there is just one letter, then plus 0 0.3 into 2 letters, plus 0 0.15 into 3 letters and 0. 1, 5 into 4 letters. Add it up, you find this works out to 1.9 bits per letter. The previous code, I had 2 bits per letter. This code, I have 1.9 bits per letter. So, I have a sale. So, in these two examples that we have given, we have seen in the first case, I had 2 bits per letter. In the second case, it is 1.9 bits per letter, which is a smaller, very small advantage with respect to the previous one, but an advantage nevertheless. The question is, what is an optimal code? Can I give a limit on what is the maximum compression possible? 
and that is what is given by the Sananatra. Let us take this example again. Remember in Sanan entropy, I do not have to worry about this specific coding that I am taking, but I am going to talk about what are the probabilities with which the various events, in this case appearance of A, C, T or G occur. So, we had said A had a probability of 0 0.4. C has a probability of 0 0.3, T has a probability of 0 0.15 and G had a probability of 0 0.15. Well, whether it was C, T or T, C is immaterial for our calculation. So, if I calculate the Shannon entropy from this, I get sum over i minus P i log P i. And this is logarithm to the base 2. This is minus 0 0.4 log 0 0.4 minus 0 0.3 log 0 0.3 minus there are two terms 0 0.15 each. So, I put add them up and write it as 0 0.3 again log of 0 0.15. You can take a calculator and work this out. Just be a little careful. Most standard calculators do not have logarithm calculated to the base 2, but it is very trivial to calculate it. You will find this is equal to 1.871. This is the maximum compression that is possible for any of the codes that you care to write down. That is called Shannon's noiseless coding theorem and only thing is that it is applicable for what is known as a non prefix code. This slide shows what is meant by a non prefix code. By definition a non prefix code is a code in which the code for a given letter is not a prefix for a second letter. So, the previous case that we considered, we said A is 0, B is 0, 1, but look at B is 0, 1. The code for A is the prefix to B. So, that tells me that code I am talking about is not a prefix code. The same example for C which is 0, 1, 1, but then D which is 0, 1 is a prefix for C and likewise for D. Examples of prefix code would be, for instance, you take A is equal to 0, 0, B is equal to 0, 1, C is equal to 1, 0, D is equal to 1, 1. You notice that none of these is a prefix for the other one. Or take another one, A is equal to 0, which means in none of the letters, 0 should come as the first letter. B is equal to 1, 0. So, again what I want is 1 0 should not appear as the first two letters of the remaining letter. So, I cannot use C equal to 1 0 1 or 1 0 0. C is equal to 1 1 0. D is equal to 1 1 1. These are examples of what are known as prefix codes. What Shannon's noiseless coding, coding theorem says is the following. That if you consider uniquely decipherable code where the letter xi occurs with a probability pi, the average length of a word which word consists of several letters has a maximum compression which is given by the entropy function and that is h equal to minus i sub minus sum over i pi log pi there is a minus sign missing in that slide and so therefore suppose I use for the letter xi a code of length ni then I must have sum over i ni pi which is the length of my average length of my letters must be greater than the entropy function 
that we talk about. And, and with this, I conclude my discussion of classical, with this I conclude my discussion of classical information theory. In the next lecture, I would go to discuss another entropy known as von Neumann entropy, which is a direct extension of the classical Shannon entropy to the case where we consider instead of classical distribution, classical ensemble, we consider quantum ensemble.